we got blueberry muffin. Insert Robitussin and Rejection playing softly in the background. Hey everyone, this is me and my boyfriend Kevin. I'm just kidding. This is my sister Kevin. Hello. And today we are going, I'm going to be asking Kevin a couple of questions this evening. Let's do it. So, I'm going to be thinking of these questions impromptu as well. What do you think of the dark web and have you ever heard of Silk Road? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the guy I know has actually purchased something off of it successfully. What do you purchase? Mm. You don't have to say it. Um, it probably wouldn't be your first guess. It's not like a gun or a purse or anything, but it'd be kind of random. You could be kind of shocked what it is. Well, like anal DMT or something? No. It's not very exotic either. Tell me what it is. Is it down? Yeah, okay. That's not shocking. Uh, but it wouldn't be what someone would think of me. Anyways, so with really popular radio trap music, what's one song that has stood out to you? The Migos Walk It Talk It music video is really great. It was shot in that I I got my start into film stuff on video, which is a four by three aspect. It's like that boxy TV look, and they shot that video in that aspect ratio on purpose. And, uh, I mean, the song is pretty much par for the course, but it's just the production of the music video is just gorgeous. Mm hmm I also feel the same way about Pemex. Is it Premex or Pemex by Shakewell? Yeah, but that's a very different thing. But, yeah, that shit, mm. That shit slaps. The music video on that is it it's slaps. so artistic. It totally slaps. And Leg Lock by Shakewell crazy. It's very hot. Yeah, it's very, very hot. very hot. The dynamics... They both have sauce. The mm -hmm. two of them both yeah, have Yeah, but those, those haven't made it to, like, radio mainstream yet. So, I know that when you meditate, you generally visualize a single bird at a park. Okay, yeah. Do you think that that represents anything in your deep subconscious, or why do you think that that happens? Um, wow, that's like a, uh, like a really uh, specific, intimate question. Okay, I'm more than happy to share. Um, it's linked to that freaking Pink Floyd song. And uh, which Pink Floyd song? Oh man, it's like an obscure Pink Floyd sky song. Off the wall, I can't remember the name of it, but the, at the beginning. He's, the, there's a little kid and he's like, look mommy, there's an airplane up in the sky. Yeah. Really beautiful music. Pink Floyd, uh, like Dark Side of the Moon, which is a really prototypical album, you know, pretty nearly lame thing to suggest. Uh, man, that shit is powerful. I, I literally had a powerful fucking like religious experience to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. I know that's a little off topic. No, no, I think it's on topic. You're answering the question. So you think that your meditation visualiza visualization is stemmed from a Pink Floyd track? A Pink Floyd track, yeah. Uh-huh. Off the wall. You have ice cream on your face. That's no, okay. Here, let me get it. Just give it, just give, just look around your mouth. I mean, you bring the fucking fire questions, just saying. Straight up. So, we're going to see Shen Yun tomorrow. Oh yeah. And I'm wondering, where did your obsession with the Falun Gong come into play? Why are you so obsessed with the underlying excessive marketing 
patterns within Shenyun's marketing team? Why, why are you so obsessed with how persistent their marketing team is and their underlying political pigment with the Falun Gong? Oh my god, what a great question. Uh, so what, the question is basically, what, what's my deal with, with Shenyun and fucking the Falun Gong? What's the deal? Okay, uh, it all basically stems from a video game called Fallout which mimics uh, Russian-style, like, Red Scare, Scare of Communism and stuff, uh, but in the future with the Chinese being the new communist. And uh, so after that, I really got kind of interested in modern Chinese culture, and uh, I, I, I started watching a bunch of vlogs about China, and I ran into one where I found out this dance. It's like Cirque du Soleil, but for China. If you live in Southern California, you've you'll seen know the frickin, what we're talking them. about yeah. 100%. Yeah, Shen Yun. Yeah. Uh, so, I ran into this video of this dude, Sir Pensa. He's awesome. He's super cool. He's on YouTube. Also, I would like to say I don't watch TV. I watch YouTube. Me too. Yeah, we're Hashtag up. me too. I think it's more intellectual. It depends how you utilize YouTube because I spend all my time watching like four chan webums. Yeah, yeah. All my time is spent watching four chan webums and then sometimes I'll find like some like dude who reviews metal albums and Oh, sometimes... there's all sorts of great shit yeah. on the internet. Anthony right? Fantano. Anthony yeah. Notano. I like Anthony Fantano and I don't always agree with him as well. Would you I... would you bang Fantano? How many beers do I get? Three and a half. And does he like it? Is, no. Does he want this? So it's like Nintendo fulfilling to him? Yeah. Will he like call me every once in a while? He's a pretty good contact to have, you know? Yeah, the melon the melon will keep in light contact if you shebang once. Wait, Would wait. you bang Anthony Fantano? Nah, I'm just too straight, honestly. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just too straight. And as, I, I, as you guys tell, I kind of thought about it a lot. Anyways, okay, the fucking Falun Gong. Alright. So, the Shen Yun is run by a cult that the Chinese government hates called the Falun Gong. And this is just, like, common knowledge. Just go fucking one Google search away, and you'll be like, holy shit, that's really weird. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to see this with my grandma. And me. <laughs> yes. And, and my Cameron sister. Child. And Cameron Child. But he, we, I, I talked on the phone about him, with him, and he knows about the freaking Falun Gong. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so freaking excited to get in on this, like, conspiracy theory. I love it. But it's mm -hmm. real. You're gonna wear, like, an Australian vest with, like, a, <laughs> like a fisherman's hat and be like, all right. The, the monocle. <laughs> I'm ready to see some culture. I am ready to see some fucking weird ass culture. I, I'm gonna spare this podcast of the story of why Shen Yun celebrates traditional Chinese stuff. Basically, uh. This is something that they can look at, into on their own. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'll, sorry. I'll leave you guys to it. Yeah. I'll, I'll spare you guys the modern yeah. Chinese yeah. history. Yeah, yeah. I was like. <laughs> Please, no. No, no, I stay. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you in the medical field? Okay. So, for those of you who don't know, I am a seasoned EMS veteran. I got my EMT in 2010. Uh, I've worked at, like, four, four different EMS agencies. Um, so, I've, I've been there in about seven years. It was about seven years of being all up in there. And... The weirdest thing I've ever seen was this hoarder's house. It was it was it was in Inglewood, and it was like really just a generally unpleasant situation. I walked in and there's like the little narrow there's like the little narrow corridors and we shuffle in them and I I swear there was a you guys know like the butt wipe box for the you know, that you wipe your ass, it's the wet wipes. Yeah, the yeah. bathroom. Oh, right? yeah, obviously. It was one of those, and it had in, like, plain Sharpie marker written on it next to her bed, the ladies, like, all fucked up, like, all confused on the ground. Vibrators. 
I, I'll, I'll regret for the rest of my life not opening the box. You wanted to open the box? <laughs> you should open the box. You should open the box. We're going to turn the tables and I'm going to interview Megan spontaneously. Um, what's the weirdest thing? Okay, so you, you go to school here locally. And what's the weirdest thing you've seen on your college campus? Um, there's actually this guy who weekly, um, walks around from class to class and, like, purchases things in the cafeteria wearing a stormtrooper helmet. What do you think is sorely lacking at your campus? Honestly, at my campus, something that is genuinely obviously lacking is, you know... A lot of my friends are pretty hip, I'm not gonna lie. Like my friends, they, they're, you know, they wear collared shirts with like lobsters on them and you know, they drive like Volkswagen buses and they drink Portola coffee and whatnot. And most of the people that I went to high school with are pretty like, pretty top notch trendy. God, not me. I am not just me. wondering where all of them went. <laughs> because at my, at my campus, it's solely, I feel like, I feel like I'm going to school in Sioux City, Iowa, because everyone wears gauchos, crocs, and an oversized different college sweatshirt. So I'm just wondering what the deal is. I'm wondering where all the cute hip people are. Poor response, I don't know. You'd think it were.